I'm Tim. I'm Sean. And we're two guys with too much time. Well, not really. It's uh, It's been kind of a while since we've updated. Sorry about that. A lot has gone by um, since, you know, essentially what was fourth quarter in the retail world. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we've missed uh, Daisho, Anime Milwaukee, and No Brand Con, as well as ASIN, as far as uh, letting you know what's coming up and uh, letting you know how it went. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Uh, but right now, first up, we've got uh, Toonami. It's back. It's back in a pretty big way. Um, they've got a great lineup this year. Um, Cowboy Bebop, um, Kashrin, Ghost in the Shell, Brotherhood. Um, not a huge fan of Brotherhood. Love, love the show that came before it. Uh, I Alchemist. haven't really seen either of them. They're good. They really, really are. Uh, people get mad at me for that. Sorry, guys. You know, if you're going to watch... You know, just one of them. I've heard that you should watch Brotherhood, um, but I watched Full Metal Alchemist first, and it kind of ruined the second one for me. Um, of course, they brought in a entirely new show um, called Dead Man Wonderland. Uh, it's kind of a sick, twisted fantasy of awesome. Um, deals with a uh, young boy um, named Gata, who uh, who's accused of a murder, the uh, murder of his entire class, um, and. Uh, deals with him trying to deal with that and trying to survive in this prison. Um, he's been poisoned and has to come up with a hundred thousand credit every time uh, that every three days is what it is really. Every three days he's got to come up with a hundred thousand. Uh, the way they do this is death matches, working their asses off, that sort of thing. Um, he is very much thrown into the gladiatorial arena. However, uh, when it's found that uh, he has certain blood powers. Um, more big news in anime. Studio Ghibli has uh, just come out with a new show, Arietti. Uh, it is based on Mary Norton's The Bower Wars, uh, a book that I, for one, truly enjoyed. And I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to seeing Arietti. Um, everything that I've read and heard about it uh, says that it is... Uh, very much in the tradition of what Miyazaki has uh, done before. It's a touching tale of uh, tolerance and friendship um, in the quality that we've come to expect from Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki films. Here with us now is Chris to tell us all about the other conventions that happened while we were busy and gone for the past couple months. Well, thank you for having me, first off. Glad I to love, have you here. I love actually being able to get down here and like the, uh, like the little setup you got. Um, to start out, we have missed Dice Show, Anime Milwaukee, ASIN, No Brand, and ourselves. So, starting out the uh, year last November, yes, last November was Dice Show Con. It, uh, an unfortunate thing happened where their, uh, the uh, hotel shut down, uh, within months. It was like a month or two, the, yeah. Within the con. They rallied together, within three weeks got their entire convention re-established in the Kalahari in Wisconsin Dells. It it was my first Dai Show Con and to have this worst case scenario happen, them to rebuild and to get it going as quickly as it that did. Quickly, yeah, yeah. No. Within you know, minutes of getting there, I was already through the uh, the registration line and being able to enjoy all of Daisho Con. It was interesting working with the hotel because they weren't sure how to take us at first, but they are going back to the Kalahari next year, and now that they've got a year under their belt, they should be smooth sailing. Right? Everything's kind of got figured out. Yeah, it's it's always good to see you know a convention be able to overcome something like that because that would be yeah worst case scenario, worst case scenario. not being able to have a convention just 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 because the venue, uh, so it was. Uh, I was really glad to hear that they could still, you know, get up and get running, and it got everything figured out really well. I didn't get to go, but yeah, I I heard that no one could tell that they had, you know, their no. venue drop out months in advance. Yeah, that's, I, a, that's a lot to plan in a short time. Had I not been <laughs> a part of uh, Kitsunkan, I would not have been able to tell that this was different from any other one. They mm -hmm. did it very professionally and quickly. Uh, moving on to Anime Milwaukee, uh, the. One venue in Milwaukee, first year down there, I loved, loved it. It's an expansive area. They actually have their own convention center and hotel. Uh, sort of set up like Asin, not as big, of course, but 
all reports were a, a roaring success. This has been one of their best years coming through. They've worked out a lot of kinks from past years. Again, first year, so I'm not sure all of the uh, stuff, but I loved, I loved what they had done with uh, the space given. No brand was the one I was actually able to get to. Um, surprisingly, um, I made a, a point to go this year because it, it was their 12th year this year. 12th, yes. Um, and it's one of the oldest running conventions in Wisconsin, and I really wanted to see kind of what they what they had to bring to the table, and you know, what to expect, and you know what to be able to learn it, learn from it for our convention. Um, there was quite a bit to do. Uh, the 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 puzzle hunt occupied most of my weekend. That in the board game room, I was in there oh, quite a bit. Yes, tabletop uh, was phenomenally set up. Always, always fun. There are people in there playing. You can walk at any time, join a game. You know, always. Or set strong games. Or set up. <laughs> I kind of ended up running three, my own morning, my yeah. own panel at yeah two in the morning. We played until six. Um, always, always a good time. Um, and yeah, the puzzle hunt was just brutal. I, I I forget the staffer's name, but the guy's a genius. Those puzzles were were great. We have Ace in this next up on the docket. Uh, Twenty three thousand attendees uh, from this year. It's always it's always nice to see they aren't technically a Wisconsin con, but my first convention. I love going back there. It's such a different feel from the small cons, but it's yeah, nice huge, to see what what, what, but... to, what to shoot for. Mm -hmm. the large venue. What we may become in the future. Always good. Uh, record low for damages done, at least what I've heard. <laughs> the Hyatt revolving doors were the one casualty I saw throughout the weekend. Which apparently happens every year. Every so year. Every year. It's it's revolving door. You don't need to push. Just, or pull, just, just or walk. stand, or Use the other doors, you know. Something. That poor door. Well, we can only hope that this message will, receive, will be received by all of those who don't like revolving doors. Moving on, um, our we, we had our own convention. Uh, hey! Uh, we had a smashing success this year. We had all, I mean, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, we had 1,400 people this year, which was a lot bigger than last year. Um, my boffing room, of course, had 292 unique attendees for the weekend. Uh, which I believe makes us the biggest buffer room in Wisconsin. Yes, um, and of course, it can only get bigger and bufferer from here. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, on that note, also the entire rest of the convention did expand out. Uh, all the other rooms got uh, adequate space and uh, everything else. We did uh, have a smashing lineup of guests. Uh, some of uh, I loved uh, everyone we had. Um, some examples: Liesel Wilkerson mm -hmm, from uh, Tekken. Yep, uh, Wardy. I. Not sure. Mr. Chocobo. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Takahata 101 and Lana Pator we from, had. They're, they're hilarious guys. Um, we also have Colin Clinkenbeard this year. Uh, and next year we have quite a big lineup as well. Um, yeah. We're actually having Liesel, Takahata, and... Steve come back. And uh, Steve, Mr. Chocobo, come back um, for this year because uh, they think that we're so cool. They um, had such a great time. Also, on that note, because we got uh, Takahata come back and rave reviews, uh, we have Lil Karibo, guaranteed guest, and we're only, what, a month or two outside of our own convention? Having names like that, it's always nice to see that we can lose our way in. Tell your friends. <laughs> always. And that's kind of a recap of all the other conventions, you know, here in the Wisconsin-ish area. Thanks, Chris, for coming by. Oh, not a problem. Love, love to stop by any time. Um, next up, Tom Clancy, Future Soldier. Really good game, kind of, you know, classic Tom, Tom Clancy, stealthy. Uh, you can't run in, you know, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Battlefield, break down the door and start shooting up the place. You you have to use the obstacles, you you have to stealth around, you have to sneak. Um, played a lot like uh, Splinter Cell Conviction, I kind of felt like. Um, I do always like the, the, the third person view. Um, of course, it goes to the first person when you start shooting the gun. Mm -hmm. you know, it, I'm not a big fan of the FPSs, I'll still play them though, because well, I play everything. Um, the AIs, kind of a bunch of morons, so it cause a bit more trouble than they're worth. Um, but they do have the cool, you know, futuristic side. They have, like, the uh, complete active camouflage, mm -hmm. where you can completely make yourself invisible and sneak around that way. Um, good stealth game, kinda, kinda short, probably only about 10 hours of gameplay. Um, didn't touch the multiplayer modes very much. I'm, I'm sure there's the same things, deathmatch, capture the flag. I'm guessing I didn't really touch on them. Um, you know, probably a good, a good rental kind of thing. Um, but a lot of other good games came out um, within the past month or so, uh, as I'm sure you've heard me talk about. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, kind of our big news 
as far as game releases go um, is Diablo. Now, I would like to make a public service announcement at this time. Diablo is bad for you. Diablo ruins relationships. It destroys love lives and time spent with those that you care about. Please, for the love that is all good and holy, stay away from Diablo. It really is the devil's work. Sean. Diablo 2, of course, for you guys who played the Diablo series, came out in about 2000. So it's been about 12 years we've been waiting for this game. And uh, after delay and delay and delay and delay, it and finally came out. A couple more, yeah. yeah. Finally more. released, May 15th, the day that'll go down to infamy. Um, ironically, also my sister's birthday, so I called her every hour. Hey, you know what happens in two hours? Diablo 3! She invited it very funny. <laughs> um, Diablo 3 has has a lot of that, that nice old-school Diablo feel. It still has the third-person view uh, fixed camera. Uh, the, the, the actual visual aspect, though, the, the characters, the animations, the, the, the environment is, is completely, completely redone. redone. And it is absolutely beautiful. Um, they pretty much just took all the old characters and somehow mixed them into the five classes they have now. So they still have the, the Barbarian, the Witch Doctor, who's basically the Necromancer, yeah. the Demon Hunter, who's basically the Amazon and the an Assassin, mm -hmm. um, the Barbarian, of course, I said already, didn't I? Yes, you did. Um, the Wizard, I'm missing someone. I don't know who. Barbarian, Witch Doctor, Demon Hunter, the Monk, the Monk. Um, who's basically the monk from the first Diablo, if you played the expansion, which was actually kind of rare. Um, and he's just awesome. Um, but for those of you who were at the Minute launch, you know the Error 37 fiasco. Um, what Blizzard did was they launched the game universally across the globe, and the servers crashed right away. So it took probably about three hours for anyone to actually play yep. the game. I imagine um, there were a lot of angry nerds screaming quite at Quite a few angry nerds screaming at their computers. Throwing things and desks being flipped. Yes. Yes. But we're okay now. Diablo's here. I have about 120, 150 hours logged, somewhere around there. That's 30 hour difference, whatever. Um, great game. If, if you played the first Diablo, second Diablo, it definitely has that same you know, old school feel. You should definitely pick it up. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the point of this game is to steal the magical stone from the skull of an evil creature called Diablo. No, kind of. That was that was more the aspect of the second one. This one's a bit a bit different. Okay. Because in the end of the second one, you actually get the stone and break it. Oh. So I'm not gonna spoil the storyline at all, but um. Oh there, no! Spoiler alert. Storyline. Go. There is no cow level. It doesn't exist, which is really sad. I I cried almost. No cow level. There's no cow level. Okay. What's a cow level? In Diablo 1, there's rumors of a cow level. Didn't okay. exist. So okay. in Diablo 2, they made a cow level. There's not one in Diablo 3. Where there are cows. Yeah. It, they're just cows with axes and swords, and they just run around and kill people. Okay. I'm Tim. I'm Sean. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm, you're Sean. Mm, we're gonna shoot a gun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, all reports from ASIN say that this is a record low for uh, things broken. Uh, of course, the round door spins around. That was broken. So I would like to request that everyone please stop pushing the door. That's not what it's there for. It's an automatic door. It moves on its own. So, don't pack too many people in the door. If you have a really big bag that just isn't going to fit, don't try and make it fit. Okay. And yes, I know the doors are big. But so are you. Thank you.